Hello, E10. This is a video about narrative writing. Um, so narrative writing is story writing. You get a choice of two tasks in your paper one language exam, either describe or narrate. While they share a lot of similar features, um, narrative writing isn't quite popular because people like writing stories, but you've got to write stories properly. So I'm going to talk, talk to you about how to write a story properly, how to plan a story properly, uh, what not to do, and then how to do it effectively. So for when you get your title, you've got to do a little bit of thinking and don't just launch into the first thing that pops into your head. So the title in this case that you're going to write about today is The Last Night. So if you've been thinking around a particular topic, previously it's been uh, perhaps you've been a like abandoned example. Uh, just do a little bit of thinking and come up with an idea for yourself. So my idea is going to be The Last Night of World War One. That's my first idea. It doesn't mean I'm going to stick to it all the way through, but that's the one that I've kind of latched onto as my particular piece of writing that I'm going to do. The second thing you need to do is hone down the perspective you're going to write it in. Is it going to be third, first, second, or third person? So are you going to write it I, or you, or are they characters a he or she? Is it going to be in past or present tense? Pick one and stick to it. Uh, if you want to write and present all the way through, that's absolutely fine. Please don't drift into past tense unless it is deliberate because you're going into a flashback. If it's in past tense, it stays in past tense all the way through unless you have, um, unless you embed a, a flashboard instead. So it's got to be a deliberate change in tense. And then work out who your central character is. There has to be one character that we are um, large following. It's a protagonist or an antagonist. They are the person that we're following for the most part. So mine is third person. It's going to be in past tense, and it's going to focus on a soldier in the trenches. Think about how you're going to structure this piece of writing, which is why planning is so important. So a bit like that when we looked at structure, exactly the same features are here. On a little bit of a grander scale, because it's not worth eight marks, it's worth 40 marks, so you have to have more shifts in your writing. Uh, it's essentially the same thing. You've got to establish something at the start. You've got to work out what's going to happen next. Are we zooming in on a detail? Are we zooming out to take in a kind of whole landscape so you can give us a bit of a description of the setting? Um, have you decided what juxtaposition you're going to use in your narrative, if you're going to use any? And I highly recommend that you do. If you are, what's the juxtaposition going to be between? Are you going to build in some flashbacks? Because narrative shouldn't be driven by a plot that's constantly moving forward in terms of action in the, in the, in the present of the story. Um, it should be driven by things that have already happened, by thoughts in the character's head, uh, because that's more interesting, that's more engaging, and that generates a little bit more empathy and sympathy for our characters. Are you going to force what's going to happen later on in the story? You should know your ending when you start writing. If you end when you start writing, then you can start to prepare the reader what happens so that at the end they can just go, Oh, I should have seen this coming. Go back to the story and read it again, or must see it with different eyes the second time around. And then where is it going to finish? All of the things need to be kind of cemented in your head before we aren't committing a story paper. And then the last couple of things that you need to think about um, are reminders of vocabulary. Vocabulary is double marked in the exam, so it's choosing words effectively that doesn't mean just throwing in words because we know that they answer. they've got to be suitable to the particular context that you're writing in metaphors and symbols will get you a lot of mark if it marks if they're used appropriately so you don't just say um he ran as fast as a cheetah because a it's boring a it's highly unlikely and c it might not be contextual Often. Um, there's no point telling me that he ran as fast as a cheetah through the woods because I don't think a cheetah run very fast through woodland. Its home is the savannah where there are no tree stumps or branches to, to get in its way. Anyway, sentence variety also really important and just make sure you get the balance uh, which I'm going to do so This um, quote that I've shown you before on show my homework for some previous tasks but I just want to show it's a quote from Gary who's written a book, How to Write Effectively. Um, and I'll just read it to you because you get a great sense if you read it out loud of why sentences are so important. This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. 
the sound of drones. It's, it's like record. The ear demands some variety. Now listen, I have very sentences like that can create music. Music, the writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, a harmony. I use sentences, and I use sentences of medium length. And sometimes I am certain that the reader is rested. I will begin with a sentence of considerable length, a sentence that burns within, builds with all the impetus of a crescendo, the roll of the drums, the of the cymbals, sounds that sail into this. It is important. So write with a combination of short, medium, and long sentences. Create a sound that pleases the reader's ear. Don't just write words. Write music. So rather than focusing on um, cramming as many foolish techniques into your writing as possible, or as, as much plot detail as possible, focus on your sentence lengths. They are so critical to getting a really good grade for your writing. Okay, here's a couple of examples of what not to do that I have created for delectation today. So first of all, um, if you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a pretty poor grade. Um, I've read countless stories that are set in woodlands uh, and they were the characters in Kenny Jen and Tesco Camp Woods. Can you picture the woods? Just woods because they're apparently all exactly the same. Casey and Jared really like each other, but you care about that because I'm not to really develop them as characters at all. I'm just going to tell you that they wear on trend clothing and have phones. Pacey is sad about something, but I'm going to forget to tell you what that is. Then I will introduce more characters because that's what this story needs, more people for you to not care about. The new people are Todd, Skylar, and a dog called Jay who immediately goes missing, and then they find him hanging from a tree, but explicitly they carry on camping anyway. Todd Ideas, not deliberately, I just forgot he was in the story. Then Lee Casey returns from the shops in the woods. So when did she leave? And finds them all dead. Kate, no one left alive, and there's a man with a hood, so I don't have to describe him to you, and he's got a knife with hood on it, of course. He chases Summer, because I thought my character was called Casey. She falls over in the, in the non-script woods, and she wakes up, and it was all a dream. Hope you can see many, many reasons why this is a Terry's piece of writing. Um, but here are kind of three takeaways from this. Don't have too many characters. You need one central character and maybe a couple, couple of characters quite so much. Uh, make your readers care about this by describing their situations, their physical situations, so where they are located, and their mental situation. Create sympathy and empathy for them. And don't be driven by plot. Create texturing your writing through flashbacks, visions, and foreshadowing, and just by adding in more characters or having crazy things happening yourself. The mistake to avoid is my Buddhist quote, if you're making a sandwich, don't cover it in icing. The beautiful blonde haired woman walks sadly down the long busy street. Her cherry red brown attraction because her handsome eyes might like crash into an old church. So, so the problem is, is that it's supposed to be a, a piece of writing, but it's um, a piece that isn't particularly interesting because it's these random details that I don't particularly care about. Show don't tell, make your readers think subtly is better than being obvious. Tell the character is sad, show us that they're sad through the things they do and the thoughts that they have. Use the word detail is needed. Don't slap in adjectives and iteration and brands don't make people more interesting. There's no point in telling me her husband died when his light lamini crashed into an old church. All churches are old pretty much. Uh, and I don't need to know that a Lamborghini was white or indeed a Lamborghini. It's not an important in the narrative. Um, the number of red dress I've had described to me over the years um, is frankly ridiculous. Um, and them read particularly well. So insert data, yes, where details are relevant and useful and actually add to the narrative. Here is my, the, the narrative that I was planning right at the beginning. So this this one that's set in World War One, the last night of World War I. Talk about it in any detail. I'm going to point out that it flips between what is effectively the, the present of the story, the others are written in past, this kind of content and then we flip flashback and what I've got to start off for because they've got a list is there's a left pocket that he keeps going back to. We've got some details about the letter and we go back to the letter here. 
here, they'll back to the letter here. Um, that makes it a more sophisticated story because I've got to hold on to that and I've got to remember that I get to this letter, but it's a really nice way to introduce flashbacks throughout the story um, and have developed your story effectively. Also, this idea of uh, like child, this is going to be my juxtaposition because this man is now a soldier and he's in a bleak situation, so I'm going to have his childhood described in quite a, a positive um, way compared to the situation he's in now. I've also got a twist in my story, which is a great thing to include. This is why we practice writing because if you get twists into your stories, um, they really aid writing and a really good in high mark your writing. So my twist my narrative is that this character who's sitting in the dark is not isolated. Um, they are, because this is a story, they are dead, dead red, and the this pocket, he can't read it in the dark. Darkness because he, he's because it's dark is how it reads to start with, but actually it's because he's dead. So that's my framework. It is is narrative. I'm not gonna read it to you. Um, I'm just going to point out that I've tried to just use um similes where they're useful to particularly if like to the reader. I've used a similar I've got one up at the top uh with the ink blanket but what i've really focused on is so i've got um become used to it one with it so i've got this repetition here that we call um where you repeat the, the end of the sentences successive sentences and the closest here where the sentence ends with her older brother and the next one starts with frank this leads into some and repetition of frank at the start of three sentences also, an example of list the three cultural features are critical to getting a real really to make sure it's right clear, but it can also make it repelling. As well. so, so, I often try when I'm doing um, end writing, creative writing, to use these repetitive, repetitive structures, trying to, try to stay warm, trying to stay alive, building in these sequences because they make writing more interesting. There's a copy of this in your. Um, Work on Show My Homework, it's attached to Show My Homework. So you can have a read it if, if you want to look at like trying to, to make some of the structures that I've used. Um, but it's over to you now. You need to use your own. These going through that I've talked about. Um, please submit your plans as well. If you want to start about your right, even if it's just the first couple of steps, because you've got your structure in your head, at least you've got a sense where the narrative is going before you start writing it. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.